Back at the Bandit blue line. Krieger up the near side. Raiden Krieger. Not away. Thomas threw it right back to Morovic. Open his free boy. Looking for Jake Backhill. Scores! Blake Jake Spice at 5 off through Carlson. It's 1-0 Oilers. Jake and Dal Correa push and shove. As the more pushing and shoving is. Here we go. We got a strap. And Jake comes over the top on the Dal Correa. I think it's spun around as. Coming over top as both get some quick shots quickly. You can see that develop and they went out of the ball. 44 is set. Lost it at the blue line. Two on one for Okotoks the other way. Jake the first but backhander and he scores. I've had a ton of people reach out to me and ask about my journey, moving on from hockey, what I'm doing now. I just wanna cover all of this in this video to help you guys out. Before we jump into the video, I want you to subscribe to the channel because I'm gonna show my life, the journey of my life, and you obviously clicked on this video for a reason. So click that subscribe button and let's jump right into the video. So to begin, I was introduced to hockey at around the age of three where I threw on my first pair of skates and was skating in my backyard that my dad introduced me to because he played at a high level growing up and he introduced me to the game of hockey. So growing up, I was always on the best teams. I was never at like the, the level below the best team. I was always on the top level team and it was, a, it was my life growing up. I didn't do much else outside of hockey. I golfed a bit. I played on Team Manitoba for golf, but outside of hockey, that was pretty much my life growing up. I was the hockey player at school. Everyone knew me. Oh, this guy plays hockey. So that was up until about 15, 16 years old. And then the first time I got cut was when I was 15 trying out for a provincial midget team. And so I played like the U16, so it was 15 and 16s. And then that next year is when I was trying out for that provincial midget team again. I didn't get drafted to the WHL. I was very discouraged that at that point, but I wasn't surprised. I wasn't like the best kid. Um, if I would have got drafted, it kind of would have been a surprise, but like any, th any kid growing up in, in Canada, especially if you don't get, get drafted to the CHL, it's definitely a hit to the heart. Now jumping into to my 16 year old year. So this is my grade 11 year, which I got cut from that provincial midget team this, a second time. And I was expecting to make the team because I played the 15, 16s and then I got, and then I jumped up to 16 years old and I got cut from that AAA team. That was the Winnipeg Wild. And up to that point of my life, that was my biggest thing to overcome. I got a call from a prep school. It's called Rink Hockey Academy. And they offered me a spot on the team because they knew I got cut um, from the Winnipeg Wild and that was a big decision for me and I'm really glad I chose to go to the rink hockey academy that was a huge move for me I had to move schools I had to move to this hockey prep school and then I played there for my 16 year old year I got protected by the Prince Albert Raiders of the WHL and that was an amazing season I played with a lot of good um, players it was a really good league and it was a lot faster than uh, what I was used to and I obviously developed into that league. And then at the end of that 16 year old year, I went to the Prince Albert Raiders camp and they asked me to sign. I was really set on the NCAA. If you didn't know, there's like two kind of paths you can go, like the WHL route or the NCAA route. And I was very set on the NCAA route just to go to go to college hockey and kind of do that thing in the States. I didn't sign with the Prince Albert Raiders. And then I went home to do a junior A camp like the MJHL, which I got drafted by the Verdon Oil Capitals. And they asked me to sign as well. I didn't want to play in the MJHL, didn't sign there. I just signed an AP card. Um, and then I went back to the Rink Hockey Academy, my 17 year old year, I got a C, I got the captain. It was a big learning experience for me because I was a captain, I was the leader, and I only got a captain when I was 14, 15 years old, and this was a big jump for me. And I really think I could have done it a lot better um, just with my kind of confidence in myself and just speaking out to the team and, and just doing that sort of thing. But during that year, I got dropped by the Prince Albert Raiders. They like really wanted me to sign, but I didn't. 
um, have any desire to at that point um, and then picked up by the Edmonton Oil Kings of the WHL it was either that day or the next day and picked me up so that was I was excited about that but I just I still didn't have any determination to go to go to the WHL and then it was that trip where we were in Edmonton and then they picked me up and went to check out the organization the, the arena everything that the Edmonton Oil Kings had to offer. And it was amazing, um, the organization. So this is my grade 12 year. And then I finished my grade 12 year. And I was now going to look for a team to play the next year. Cause I didn't sign with PA, I didn't sign with Edmonton. And I want to go the NCAA route. So I went to a few camps in uh, the West. I got flown out to Spruce Grove. They asked me to sign, I didn't sign because I didn't want to commit just yet. I still had some time to go to some other camps. I went to Chilliwack Chiefs in the BCHL. They didn't ask me to sign. That was probably the one team that I was top of my list, uh, just because it was the BCHL and that's the best league in the CJHL at the time. So they didn't sign. And then I went to Okotoks, Alberta at 18. I signed. I was very happy with them. The organization was amazing. I played there uh, for my 18, 19 season, as we'll get into here. And the rookie season, it was a shock. It was a big league. It was a fast league. It was a good league. I definitely had to transition from the CSSHL into that league. There were several D1 and, and NHL scouts at the games. And the first year, there was around eight rookies, and we all rotated getting scratched, so we weren't playing in the games every game. Um, so that was definitely hard for me and just hard for anyone sitting out in games, but it taught me a lot about actually putting in all your effort during every single game because you only got that one game to kind of take advantage of the opportunity that you had in that game. During that 18 year old year, that's when COVID, that's when the first year of COVID hit. And this is when the season got kind of messed up during Christmas time. We only missed a couple of games. And then after Christmas, we were still playing, still playing, still playing, but COVID got around the league and then it messed up playoffs, no playoffs. So that was a huge shock. And at that point, I was talking to several D1 teams that I started talking to around 16 when I started playing with the rink. And then um, what happened then? So yeah, we got kicked out of, we didn't get kicked out just the playoffs just didn't happen for the whole league and I'm not going to say anything like I would have committed if we had playoffs but our team was really good and I was just very confident that I would have committed that year if things kept going well and then that year um, we played 46 games so it wasn't it wasn't a full season we didn't get full playoffs obviously but yeah, we played 46 games. Then my 19 year old season came and this was the weirdest season yet. I've never had an experience like this in hockey. And this is when the second year of COVID came around and the worst year of COVID because we only played seven games the whole year. And this was this was a time where um, I was falling apart. We went home in December because of COVID then I was at home, no games, no practices. I didn't know what to do, do with myself. I only had hockey up to this point in my life pretty much um, because that's what I did. I went to practice games, training, gym, working out just, just for hockey. And then when COVID hit, we didn't have anything. We didn't have practices, we didn't have games. And then I remember one particular day at home in Winnipeg during that break, like a two month break, when I was skating outside in minus 35 degree weather, and I just thought to myself, I hate this. I hate this, I've never, but I've never had that experience before. And at that particular moment, when I was skating, I hated it. I did not like playing hockey anymore. Like it just didn't fuel me in any way. Like I was passionate before, but I think one of the biggest reasons for that was I had a purpose when we had games, when we had practices, when we had things to look forward to, when we had scouts coming to the games, when you had scouts talking to you. Okay, you have some sort of motivation, some sort of um, why behind you're doing it. But then when COVID hit, I just didn't have, I, was, I just was not having fun. I lost passion for it. 
I kept training and kept working out, but something in my mind just flipped and it was weird for me because I've always liked hockey up to this point and looking back at it, it might have been a bit of burnout because I was training so much without something in mind, without a season, without a game, without practices. So it might have been burnout, um, but then it's Christmas. I just kept training and then that's when the first thing in my mind went, do I do I still want to play hockey? Because I was interested in so many things like fitness content, like building businesses online and just that part of me that I never got to actually put a lot of time into. And during COVID, I actually had that time. And then when hockey kind of wasn't an option, then I loved this stuff because I never had that option to commit so much time to something I'm so passionate about other than hockey. Then on January 4th, my uncle passed away and that gave me a huge realization and a huge shock to me that why am I still doing this? Why am I still playing hockey? Why am I still putting myself through this in something that I don't truly love and that I'm not truly passionate about anymore because I'm now 19 years old and yeah, I'm still playing hockey. I started when I was three years old. I'm still playing. I'm still grinding it out um, to go to to go to college in, in NCAA and who knows after that. So that's that's when I first got something in my mind that said, why are you still playing hockey in a way? And then I didn't know what to do. I did not know what to do. Was I going to tell people? Was I going to tell my family? Was I going to tell my friends? Was I going to tell my teammates, my coach? I, I was so stuck because I... It was like something inside me just flipped. Like, why are you still playing hockey? And um, that day when my uncle passed away, that was definitely something that flipped a switch in me and made me realize why am I still doing this? So I told my sister because I'm very comfortable telling her anything. Um, and then she helped me realize that I was only not moving on from hockey because of what other people thought, what my friends thought, what my family would think, what my teammates would think, what my coaches would think. And it's super fair to me to think that way because, and super fair for anyone out there that plays hockey or any other sport because that's all I was. I was only a hockey player. Like if you came up to me or asked someone about me, who was I? I was a hockey player. And then it was definitely an an identity thing that I was having an issue with and just something that I never got to experience of, okay, who am I now? Like it was running through my head that if I quit hockey, what, what, who would I be? What would I do? And that sort of thing. And I was caring so much about what other people thought and their opinion in me and what I did that I didn't even acknowledge what I was actually feeling and what, what I wanted to do. And this is a great example of getting help with things you're having troubles with. We judge people, like humans judge other people and they help other people overcome obstacles that you might not be able to overcome or you might not be able to actually think about yourself. So I went to my sister and she saw what I was doing. I was just focusing on other people and, and their opinion. It was that and the, and the fact that if I still play hockey and I just keep grinding it out just for other people's opinions, if I didn't have the guts and if I didn't reach out to my sister and talk to her, I would have still been playing hockey 100%. I have no doubt in my mind if COVID didn't happen, I would not have been in this journey of my life. I would have still been playing hockey and I would have regretted not moving on from it. I wouldn't have been able to live out the dreams I had that I'm doing right now if I didn't move on from hockey at that point and have the guts to just move on. And I would have just let my dreams and my aspirations just fly by me. The, the way I got over this was I put myself in shoes of my eight year old self. So I would imagine myself as an eight year old looking back at myself at 19 years old and asking myself, why didn't you do that? Why didn't you move on from hockey? Why didn't you 
travel the world? Why didn't you start those businesses? Why didn't you do what you wanted to do at that very moment? Because you only thought of what other people thought. And it was so damn clear to me that when I put myself in my 80 year old shoes, yes, I'll move on. I wish I moved, I wish I would have moved on from hockey at 19 years old rather than let's say 25 years old when I would have got out of college or got out of NCAA. And, and then it was so clear to me at that point, it was obviously super hard for me to still get over the fact of telling my teammates, telling my friends. And then after I told my sister, I had to tell my parents and this was a very big, um, emotional time for me and a hard time for me in my life. I think this was probably the hardest conversation that I've had with my mom and my dad because it was, it was new to me and for them to hear that for everything that they've invested into it and to just see me kind of fall out of love with it. I could see how a parent would be very um, confused and okay, what what's he up to now? Like why, what, what made him choose this decision? And that, and that was hard. I really know that that was hard for my parents to kind of cope with. Um, they're, they've got over it now and they see my vision now and they're happy for me now, but it took a while for them to actually kind of come to the fact with that, okay, he's moving on from hockey. Cause that's all I did from three years old to 19 years old. And now for me to just kind of, it was like they thought I was going on like the wrong path and I completely see it. But for me, I just didn't see that. I just thought, okay, I'm going on a new path. So I could have gone like, okay, this is a hockey path. This is my path now. I could have kept going along this hockey path or this path. And yeah, it was, it was hard for my parents to kind of cope with. But once we got to terms with, okay, this is why I'm doing it and everything along those lines then then it was easier for me to kind of understand where they're coming from and they to understand where i'm coming from so i gave myself so this was at christmas of my 19 year old year and we went back and i gave myself that three months that end of the year to kind of okay this is my last hockey like this is it i didn't tell any of my teammates yet. I, I didn't tell any of my coaches yet, any of my friends. Yet. I told a couple of my friends and um, yeah, it was a shock to them obviously, but it was, it was very scary for me because I didn't know what they would think of me. I didn't know, I didn't know if they would even talk to me, to be honest. I didn't know a lot of things. I didn't know a lot of things um, about the situation. I made up so many bad scenarios in my head that I look back on and, and think about, <clears throat> and think about, oh, you made so many bad scenarios that just didn't come to fruition at all. That was my final three months of playing hockey. Um, and I had fun with it. I think I had that passion again, but I just knew that, okay, it was time for me to transition out of hockey and open a new chapter of my life. And then after that season, about a week after when I went home, um, moved out of my billets, um, took all my stuff home like okay the season's over um, we played seven games that year it was just weird it seemed like we were just waiting for COVID to kind of open everything up and that's a that's another reason why I kind of moved on because I didn't know if COVID was going to happen the next year or the next year or the next year and I just didn't want to having to keep weight on COVID to to stop me from doing everything I want to do, my aspirations, my things I want to do. And if I kept waiting and waiting and waiting, then I would have just, I would have never committed to moving on from hockey. And I thought there's never going to be a perfect time. There's never going to be a perfect time. If I, okay, it, I would have moved on at 19 or 25 after I was done NCAA. And I thought, okay, let's just do it now because COVID and everything. So I told my coach and my teammates and my coach, um, he was very respectful about it. He very much understood. And he explained to me that I had multiple schools interested in me for taking me in. Um, but at that point, it wasn't about where 
it wasn't about how high I would go in hockey or where I would go in hockey. It was more about I'm just ready to move on from hockey, no matter whatever happens with with schools or anything. Um, so I respect everything that Okotoks did for me and taught me everything about a lot of things, to be honest, which I very much appreciate. And just, um, yeah, it was, an, it, it was an amazing experience. The teammates were great. I'm in touch with a lot of them now. I was ready to move on from hockey in a way. Like I was ready to close that chapter and kind of move on into, it was like a new life, it seemed like. It was, it was really exciting. It was really like a weight off my shoulders. Like I wanted to do this, but I just didn't know. But it was super scary, and this was the hardest decision of my life up to this point, 100% was moving on from hockey. Don't be scared of what other people think of you. If you want to move on from hockey, if you want to keep playing, there's nothing wrong with either of those decisions. It's just for me, this is my journey and this was my decision. I shut my door of hockey. Okay, that's done. And now I have to open another door. I don't, I don't know what this door has. I don't know what this door has to entail. If you would have told me a year and a half later I would be living in Sweden, not, not a chance. It's just, it was super refreshing and super new to kind of open a new door in my life that I had no clue what was in that door. And I think that's something that I'll cherish for the rest of my life. A lot of people can look at it like, you're closing hockey and there's nothing moving forward. Okay, so life's done after hockey, life's done after kind of your, your childhood sport. Okay, what's your next chapter of your life? What else do you like? Do you have any passions? And it's, it's honestly amazing if you don't have any passions because you don't know what's out there. You don't know what's out there to discover and this is your chance to kind of find your new passions, your new path of life. And I wanted to make this video for you if you're thinking about moving on from hockey, if you're thinking about, thinking about moving on from whatever it is. Just remember that you're writing your story and your story is not gonna end. If you have any questions, DM me on Instagram, comment anything you have on this video. Um, so yeah, make sure to subscribe, like the video, appreciate you watching. I'll see you in the next one.